Ladies and gentlemen, Tina Fey. David Letterman began his career as a choreographer and black opera singer in the early 1950s. Just so that one day he could qualify for this award. Mr. David Letterman, as I call him out of respect and fear, has unknowingly been a family friend of mine since I was 10 years old. My mom, Jean, and I spent every weekday morning of the summer of 1980 watching the David Letterman show. Who was this Dave Letterman guy? Was he a brilliant, subtle, passive-aggressive parody of a talk show host? Or just some Midwestern goon who was a little bit off? <laughs> well, here we are, 32 years later, and time has proven that there's really just no way of knowing. <laughs> By the time I left for college, late night had cemented its place as the epicenter of culture for anybody who wasn't a dope. Every single boy I went to college with was basically doing a 24-hour-a-day David Letterman impression. They would, whenever possible, use old-timey phrases like program and goof and, for the love of God, folks, don't try this at home. And it really worked to make me like them. And I'm not embarrassed to say that by graduation, I had been turned down by dozens of David Letterman impersonators. <laughs> but the joke's on you, college nerds, because I grew up to be an off-brand weirdo, and I have been, if the internet is to be believed, lucky enough to appear on The Late Show with David Letterman 15 times, only sometimes because somebody more important had canceled. <laughs> Yes, I have met Mr. David Letterman 15 times, and I feel like now, if I saw him in a restaurant, I actually know him well enough to know that he would not want me to bother him. <laughs> Dave is, is someone you watch not just because you like him, but because you fantasize that he would like you. In fact, you could argue that Mr. Letterman's at his best when he's interviewing someone you suspect maybe he doesn't like at all. Whether it's calling Bill O'Reilly a bonehead, or asking Paris Hilton about eating hard-boiled eggs in jail, which is really a piece of poetry. Watch it again if you haven't seen it lately. Or just sitting back and letting Madonna be a high-status dum-dum. <laughs> David Letterman is a professor emeritus at the Here's Some More Rope Institute. And tonight, we declare it officially. My mom was right. David Letterman, you are an American treasure. Like the Grand Canyon, or the Chicago skyline, or the top two Kardashians. <laughs> top 10 reasons I love being Dave's mom. Here we go, number 10. When I see him on his show, I know he's not in jail. That's right. It's just that simple. Meet the Lettermans. An Indiana family as normal as pie. And then there was Dave. Hoping for a date with destiny. It was at college that he found out what he was good at. Fooling around on camera. <laughs> he headed west with a secret wish. To be funny enough to be invited on the Johnny Carson show. He labored three years in the jungles of television. Then he got the call. The curtains part, your heart is pounding, and all the time you're wondering, what will Johnny say? 
I have a feeling from your shot on this show tonight, you're going to be working a lot outside the comedy star. Thank you. Really? I hope you come back with us. I'd love to. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. He went from Johnny's guest to guest host. Then, got a morning show of his own. The great show, wrong time of day. What he needed was a time slot so late, he'd be free to try anything. <laughs> this is what kids were watching after their parents went to bed. Hi, I'm Mr. Curious. Mr. Curious? Mr. Curious? Yeah, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a mailman. <laughs> uh, so it, it's going to go through the roof. You know? those, those steroids, by the way, apparently don't affect your ego, do they? It was a new territory for a talk show and a new kind of funny. Dave had dreamed of inheriting his hero's throne and time slot. When he didn't get it, CBS grabbed him and hoped his young audience would follow. And so began the next 20 years of Dave's revolutionary ride. house everybody's seen it on TV right. every idiot in the area is gonna drive by honking now was that you <laughs> after 30 years Dave is still unhinging the doors of comedy and that's why we keep watching because we never know where he'll go you're, you're from uh, as I recall you're from Bangladesh yeah I'm yes. from Bangladesh okay does she share her materials? Yes. Oh, she does? Yeah, but when she goes out on the... Does she work well with others? Mm, sort of. Mm -hmm. Right. But when she goes Is she out... constantly interrupting? You are. The guy who broke all the rules became the most decorated man in television. Now, every night, there are bright young comedians all over America inspired by David Letterman. Ladies and gentlemen, Alec Baldwin. Watching The Late Show with David Letterman is like being on a roller coaster. It's exhilarating, it's also dangerous, scary, it makes you sweat, and sometimes when it's over, you throw up. <laughs> and that's just the viewers. <laughs> now. We know that Dave has fun at our expense, so we wanted to cook up something to turn the tables on him. Something that would get him out of his comfort zone. Something that would make him squirm. Something he would hate. <laughs> so tonight, we're giving him the Kennedy Center Award. <laughs> it's perfect. First, Dave had to travel all the way from New York City to Washington, D.C. A journey of 200 miles on a private jet. We have him sit in a box and watch artists perform for two full hours. Put him in a big room full of people he doesn't know. Make him wear a tux with plain old black socks. And then we don't let him say anything. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Kimmel. 
For any entertainer, being honored at the Kennedy Center is the crowning moment of a long and outstanding career. And for David Letterman, this is also unquestionably the single worst night of his life. <laughs> Look at him. I, I know he's smiling, but that medal hanging around his neck, there's a 40% chance he'll hang himself with it. <laughs> but despite the fact that he will hate every second of this, I'm here tonight to talk about how great Dave is and what he means to me as a talk show host and as a woman. <laughs> In February of 1983, when Late Night with David Letterman went on the air, I was 15 years old and lucky enough to have a little black and white TV set in my bedroom. Every night after my parents went into their room to molest each other, I'd, <laughs> I'd stay up late secretly watching Johnny Carson. And then I started staying up later to watch the guy who went on after him. And while I loved Johnny, I fell in love with Dave. When I turned 16, I blew out the candles on a late night with David Letterman cake that my mom made me. My first car had a late night vanity plate. I drew pictures of Dave on the covers of all my textbooks. I started a late night with David Letterman club in high school. To me, it wasn't just a TV show. It was the reason I would fail to make love to a live woman for many, many years to come. <laughs> Every night, I wanted to be David Letterman. All my friends wanted to be David Letterman. Ironically, the only person who didn't want to be David Letterman is David Letterman. <laughs> and that is a shame because you, Dave, are the funniest, the smartest, the weirdest, the coolest, and the best one ever, hands down. And the greatest thrill of my career came last month when Dave agreed to be a guest on my show. He could tell I was nervous, so right before the show, he came to my dressing room and just held me. But Dave, whether you like it or not, you are my hero, and you are a hero to most everyone in this room, with the possible exception of the people who came to see the ballerina. <laughs> it's, no one will ever measure up to you. It's impossible, because we wouldn't know how to do this without you. You taught us, you inspired us, and most of all, you made us laugh really hard. Thank you, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Romano. I've always thought as a performer, the last thing you want to do is bomb in front of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, they were a big part of my childhood. I, uh, I lost my virginity to the first two minutes of Stairway to Heaven. Seriously. <laughs> I did. And... I apologize for the next 11. That's a long song. <laughs> but while Led Zeppelin was very memorable in my life, David Letterman changed my life. I was 36 years old. I had been doing stand-up for about 11 years, making a, a modest living. And I remember earlier in that year, I thought I had my big break. I got cast in a sitcom. And it was very exciting. I had three little kids. My wife and I were living in Queens. We started to film the pilot, and uh, after day one of rehearsal, I got fired. Yes, it was, it was rough, but I didn't even think of quitting because Dave was out there. He was where I wanted to go. And yes, I got fired, but do you quit? Do you quit? You, you want to win the World Series. Do you quit? You're down one game to nothing. No, you keep going. You keep going. Do you quit? when you're down one nothing in debates. No. No. You keep going. I have to tell you, I sometimes wonder where I would be if it wasn't for Dave, where any of us comics would be. I'd still be doing stand-up because that's what I love to do. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd probably be on the road. Every now and then, I guess I'd have to do Kimmel. You're still right here. <laughs> but Dave was the best, and I had just done his show, and then it was three days later. I, this, I, I remember exactly where I was. It was a Saturday, and we got a phone call at my house. My wife told me it's the Letterman people, and I didn't know. I, I was a little worried. I was like, what are they? You know, did someone see me steal the mug? Why are they calling? <laughs> And it was the producer who said, Dave liked what he saw. He wants to talk about 
signing you to a development deal and possibly developing a show. And that show was Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, Dave, I know you hate all this, but if you believe one thing, believe that what Johnny Carson was for you, you are for the rest of all of us here. Uh, and I don't want to get schmaltzy. I don't want to end, because I'm not good at that. I know you're not good. But you know what? The hell with it. I, um, my father passed away. I never told him I love him. Dave, I know you're only 65. You look good. The heart's working. But I ain't taking any chances. I love you, David Letterman. <laughs> Right. I just want to ask you a question. When yes. you're on The Late Show, does Dave talk to you during the commercial breaks? Um, I try to initiate conversation. Like what? What do you I don't, do? I, that's just that I can never figure out what to talk about. I remember before one appearance, I actually raised my cholesterol just so we'd have something in common. <laughs> yeah. How about... Nothing? He doesn't talk to you at all? No, but I can sometimes tell that he's thinking about me. Yes. <laughs> I've, had a cool, I've had a few of those. Alec, does he talk to you? Uh, since he stopped smoking cigars, we have nothing to say to each other at all. <laughs> Remember, Tina, does Dave talk to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we talk all the time. No. Yeah, we talk really? about everything, yeah. Our kids, what we're doing on the weekend, books we're reading. Yeah. You don't get paid more than us, though, right? Oh, no. No, no everybody gets scale. It's scale. Oh, yeah. 600, okay. what is scale? It's like 600 and... Something like that. $678, yeah. I think. Although that's 296 after taxes. <laughs> no. Hey, David Letterman, thank you for all you've done for all of us. For all of us everywhere. You've heard us uh, say wonderful things about you tonight. We're really sorry. I promise this won't happen again. Thank you, Dave.